morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Fernando Torres, and this is my colleague, Hector Cortez. And today we'd like to introduce to you our processor, the Forma Prime. So in our presentation today, we would like to uh, discuss, uh, we're going to go over a, a brief introduction, uh, baseline features, enhancements, feature enhancements, and we're going to end it with a closing comment and Q&A session. So to start off, um, the reason we chose Prime was because we wanted to choose um, a strong um, word for our processor. Um, if you see in the, in the definition of Prime, uh, we kind of like this uh, definition of best, of best possible quality and excellence. And it's kind of something we kept in mind when designing. So for our baseline features, we have a um, Harvard memory architecture, two memory modules for our data and our um, instruction memory, um, 1K by 32. And the data is stored in a little Indian format. For our data types, we have a 32 by 64 integer and floating point register files. And we have our status flags. We have five bit integer um, flags for our control, um, I'm sorry, for our carry, negative, overflow, and zero. And we have our interrupt enable. And we also have a six uh, floating point registers, um, six floating point flag registers. So um, for instruction set, these are all the the instructions we have, we have single, double, triple, conditional, unconditional, calls, returns, flag and processor instructions, immediate operand, and floating point instructions. And our addressing mode are register, register indirect, and immediate. So this is a top level uh, block diagram for our CPU. On the left we have the execution unit, and on the right we have the control unit. And in the middle we have all of the control signals coming from the control unit to the execution unit. So on the left here, we have the, um, the address signals from the execution unit to our data memory, our input uh, output memory, and the instruction memory. And on the bottom here, we have the um, data signals coming in from those same memory modules. And on the right, we have all of the memory control signals. So the um, chip select, read, write, as well as the interrupt and the interrupt acknowledge. And going in, here's our execution unit. We have the floating point data path, the integer data path, and the bus interface unit. And one thing I'd like to point out is right there we have a MUX that we use for our interrupts. That is how we get our flags um, from memory when we pop them off. They go through that MUX and then that will go out and go into the, um, the control unit. And here is our bus interface unit. A um, couple things I'd like to point out here. These are the flags coming from the control unit. They go into this MUX, which goes into our FP buff. Um, register, and from there we can push them onto the memory. Um, and a couple of these muxes, they had to, like the IP mux, we had to add more signals to do all the um, baseline instructions. So here we have the adder, which goes in to generate effective addresses for um, all of the relative instructions. Um, excuse me. And then they also have um, various inputs to implement the, the, um, the other baseline instructions. Here's our integer data path. Uh, it's very similar to the baseline. Um, to the baseline, the only difference would be the SMUX. We added some more um, inputs to be able to implement all the baseline instructions. And the same thing goes for our floating point data path. Um, we added uh, input to be able to do all of the um, instructions. So now for our enhancements. Um, so. We were thinking about how to push our, um, our architecture even further, and we were kind of inspired by ARM, so what we decided to do is create um, our own conditional uh, execution of, ex of ex instructions mm -hmm. and our conditional setting of flags. So conditional execution of instructions. It will give, us, give the user the ability to execute instructions based on the current status of the flags, and it also saves your execution clock cycles by checking the condition in decode. Uh, for a conditional setting of flags, we uh, give you the ability to prevent the flag from being updated during the execution of the instruction. And when combined with the conditional, well, with our conditional ex execution of instructions, it can implement, implement a vast amount of instructions. So if we take a look at this um, triple uh, operand um, control word. We see that we have 8-bit operand uh, code field, 35-bit operand field but we still have nine bits unused. So this is how we decided to implement it. So for our 23rd bit, we're gonna uh, use a conditional instruction enable bit. We have a flag suppressor bit on bit 22. 
and our preconditioned um, bits are going to be located in bits five, uh, 75. And this is how we modify the other um, control words for our jumps, our immediates, and our flag processing. Uh, one of the things we couldn't do is we couldn't implement it on the conditional jumps and jump relatives and call relative um, because we just didn't have any free bits to implement that on. And these are our preconditions. So we have zero, not, no zero, overflow, no overflow, negative, no negative, carry, and no, no carry. And those are the, um, the corresponding bits. So here's a snippet of the Verilog code. Um, it's located in the decode state of our control unit. The first thing we do is we check if the conditional instruction enable is set. If it is, we'll follow to this next if statement. The purpose of it um, is to filter out the um, the instruction types that we don't support. So the uh, conditional jumps, the call to the jump relative. Um, if it's any of those, we don't want to fall into our case statement. So we um, make sure that we filter them out there. Here is our case statement, which checks the um, the conditional instruction prefix field, and depending on the value. So here in the comments, we have the um, corresponding uh, prefix field. So if, for example, that one's uh, if zero, that one would be if carry. Um, if not zero, if not carry. And pretty much the idea is if we have this, for example, the zero, we want to execute that instruction if the zero bit is high. So what we do is we check if flags present state of the zero. If it's not equal to one, then we send them straight to fetch because it didn't um, it didn't meet the condition uh, and it, it didn't meet the condition being that zero is set to one, so we don't execute the instruction. We send them to fetch. Otherwise, the state stays the same, um, which would already be set by the previous case statement, which gets its value depending on the um, the opcode. Mm -hmm. And so here we show an example of how we could implement such uh, conditional execution of instructions. Uh, we all used if else uh, statements when uh, writing code. So we wanted to show um, a simple if else statement. So right here we have if x is greater than 0, y equals x plus 2, else y equals x plus 5. And here in the comments we have the, the values. Before enhancements, this is uh, the amount of code you would need to uh, implement. You would have to have a compare, a jump if positive, an add immediate, and a jump done. And in the case that there was a uh, zero, you would jump to the if, your if condition, you add immediate, and then you're done. Mm -hmm. So with our preconditions, um, you could reduce um, code space by just implementing two, um, two lines of code after the compare. Um, you do the compare, the um, negative add immediate, or not negative um, add immediate. Implement the same thing. So here we took the modules. On the left we have them um, um, as they were, as they were with the baseline instructions, and on the right we have them modified to include our conditional instructions. Um, as, you, oh, as you can see here, oh, hopefully, um, the total amount of clock cycles for the regular baseline instructions is 70. Um, on the conditional instructions, uh, it actually um, goes down a little bit by four to 66. And then highlighted are the snippets of code that we changed. So. In the original baseline, there was a jump if positive, and it would skip these instructions. We replaced that with um, conditional prefix instructions, mm -hmm. um, the equivalent ones right there. And then the second bit of snippet of code that we changed would be right there. The jump if carry, it would skip that halt. We would just uh, put a conditional prefix from the halt, not carry. And then um, that's how we changed it there. And then the same thing for module eight, there's a subroutine. Um, in blue are all the instructions that are included in the loop, because the subroutine does have the loop. Mm -hmm. um, and on the right, it's on the subroutine, both are conditional instructions. Um, here we have the total amount of clock cycles in the loop, so 53. Uh, 53 uh, clock cycles per loop. We run the loop four times, so that's a total of 212 clock cycles. 212 clock cycles from the loop plus the four from the return right here gives us a total of 216. Now on the right, we have 50 per loop, uh, which is uh, executed four times for a total of 200 clock cycles. 200 from the loop plus two from the not zero jump. So that comes from this guy right here, the very when uh, R5 is one, it gets decremented, so it gets R5, uh, R5 gets one minus one. Mm -hmm. But we still have to execute the fetch and decode of this instruction because decode is where we catch the condition. So you still have the two clock cycles coming from fetch and decode there, which is why we uh, <coughs> here. And we 
add the four from the return, and we get a total of 206 uh, clock cycles. Oh, and then I highlighted here uh, what the changed. original and then the change. Good job. Now for the conditional setting of flags, we the way we implemented it is our flags only get updated on the last execute stage. And what I mean by that is, uh, for example, loads a six uh, cycle instruction, fetch, decode, and then we have load one, load two, load three, load four. Our flags only get updated during load four, uh, which would be the last stage of the instruction before it goes to fetch. Um, and the reason we do that is because for specific for for like a jump register, we would have issues because the jump register and fetch it would get the new control word and sometimes that uh, our conditional instruction label wasn't set. Um, so here at fetch at the positive edge the flags would get updated but they wouldn't be what they were originally. Mm. So it would it would mess with the jump and it would execute the um, jump logic on like the flags values that we didn't want. So here is the parallel code that implements it. Um, if reset, we just reset the flags. Else, we go here. This is how we check to see if the CPU is in the last stage of instruction. If the state's fetched, that means it's about ready to finish the instruction and go to fetch, get a new instruction. So if that's true, we go here and we check if the conditional flag suppressor is on. If it is, the flags uh, present state just get present state again. Uh, they don't update, they stay mm -hmm. the same. Otherwise, we update them, so present state gets next state. Mm -hmm. So for future enhancements, um, we missed a couple of pretty important conditional prefixes. We missed uh, greater than, less than, less than, equal to, greater than, equal to. Um, equal to, not equal to. These will all be pretty simple to implement. We would just have to extend our conditional instruction field by a little bit, add another bit, and then that way we could um, uh, implement those prefixes as well, which would really mm -hmm. help a lot. And then the second enhancement we would like to do is the barrel shifter. Uh, we didn't do it, but we could put it in parallel with the ALU, and I don't believe it would be um, too difficult. So during, um, is it decode or is it fetch that you're checking the flags? I, I, I. For the flags? Yeah. That's a separate always block. Um, oh, it's a separate always block? Yeah, and it's always, it's checking. So it's checking, it's always at the positive edge of the clock. And if it's reset, then we'll go in here. Otherwise, we're, uh, we check to see if we're in the last stage of instruction. So that's why we would only update on that positive edge. We wouldn't update here or here. Okay. Nada? Nada? Okay, good job, you guys. <laughs>